Hi there, chaps. We're continuing our chess series dedicated to Bobby Fischer, uh, the legend and the genius of Bobby Fischer, again being brought into our attention because uh, this is dubbed as the game of the century. So we're talking about a game that happened in 1956 in between uh, Donald Byrne with white and Robert James Fischer or Bobby Fischer with black. Uh, Donald Byrne, just to say he was a, uh, an international master, played in between 1930s and late 70s. He was an American university professor um, teaching English and also a very, very strong chess player. And this game is so fabulous that actually <clears throat> it has no inaccuracies, no errors, no miss move for those of you that are familiar with the chess.com engines and stuff like that. And three brilliancies, amazing sacrifices, something that for a human, it's absolutely spectacular. So, rightfully so, this one may be dubbed as the game of the century. Well, we're talking about the 20th century now. We're in 21st century, but okay. Game of the 20th century. Let's put it this way so everybody's happy. And um, let's dive into it, guys. Uh, this game uh, started as a ratty opening, then tra transposed to King's Indian, and then finally to Grunfeld defense Russian variation. So... Let's just start with this one. So knight f3, knight f6 here, c4, okay, and the g6. So we are developing stuff now. Um, knight c3, getting all the stuff. So that might be roughly put like an English opening here, Anglo-Indian uh, queen knight's variation. Okay, so don't 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 stress yourself uh, uh, too much about this. Bishop g7, now we're getting into a ready opening, kingside fianchetto, and d4. Uh, King's Indian defense here, d4 right now. Uh, taking a lot of space in the center. Let's just show here. A lot, a lot of space in the uh, Black's half territory here by Dona Burn castles the king. Now, with Black in this, so to speak, King's Indian now, you've secured the king. The king is safe. You're lacking space though, so you will have to do something in regards to the d pawn, c pawn. You need to get your portion of the space here because. Uh, you're just simply getting completely dominated from a spatial point of view. So bishop f4, more uh, power, pieces developing, very important. So this is an aspect I always say to my chess friends, do never forget to develop your pieces off the back rank. Whatever it's being played, uh, you cannot win, you cannot defend or attack unless you have your pieces developed. Very important, that's, a, that's an eternal principle in chess. So d5, now we're getting into Grunfeld defense, <clears throat> uh, trying to put a stop to white's expansion in the center. d5, queen to b3, what does that mean? Queen to b3 developed uh, from the starting square, already attacking here like, let's count them three times. We got one, we got two, we got three. So you cannot ignore this. You either defend or you do something. They all come with consequences because that's what about in chess whatever you do it has consequences as in life so to speak <coughs> so queen b3 attacking this guy three times keeping an eye on b7 so you need to address this thing and bobby decides to play d5 takes c4 okay so that attacks the queen and queen takes now uh why queen's position is slightly exposed and will be attacked by various pieces and we're going to see this shortly now c6 you may wonder why. Again, a multi-purpose. First thing first, you probably notice there is a bishop and a queen aiming at c7. So for those of you that are studying the openings uh, now, it's always important to understand every single step you are playing and study the Super Grandmasters game because you will be learning a great deal. So now let's go back to uh, Donald Byrne and Bobby Fischer. So c6 had to be played, just stopping losing the pawn. And also also uh wanted to say you know if you want to push that guy i'm gonna uh, uh i'm gonna stop it okay because you are controlling the square three times going now more space being taken by donald Byrne, more and more space and also opening up the bishop's diagonal okay so the bishop now is happy to coming into play so e4 a lot of space being taken here tons of space knight b8 to d7 which has the prospect to perhaps playing at some point, and uh, moreover, developing the pieces, also very, very important. Uh, rook A to D1, what's not like about this one? You get a lot of domination here. You're getting the rook from the corner right on the D file, where 
my chess friends, where the queen is. So as soon as these guys will be disappearing, you need to uh, be concerned about your queen aligned with the opponent's rook. Keep this in mind, and if you can, try to uh, uh, address that issue. What does Bobby does? He, uh, what does he do? He plays knight d7 to b6 now, <clears throat> hitting the queen. You attack the queen. That's it. Queen must move. That's a forcing move. That's what we call a forcing move in chess, guys. You attack a bigger piece with a with a, with a lower ranked piece hitting a bigger piece here. So queen had to move. Okay, queen goes on uh, c5. Still playable, not a problem. And now we're going to see uh, a further development. Bishop from c8 to g4. Okay, you are pinning the knight, so to speak. Knight is pinned to the rook. Knight moves. I'll take your rook. So white has to be careful about this little detail. Finally, Bobby developed all his minor pieces. All of the black pieces are in the game actively pursuing, attacking, conditioning, and pinning. Exactly as you see now. Remember the principle. Develop your pieces. That should be your mantra. And just keep, keep, keep remember and uh, uh, keep reminding yourselves and just do it. It'll become your second nature. And now he plays, by the way, now this is the moment, actually. This is the very critical moment of the game, my chess friends, where actually white goes, so to speak, against the tenets of the openings. He moves twice the same piece in the opening, namely the bishop on f4. Instead of developing something like bishop e2, which would take you one step closer to castling your king, securing your king, and then enjoy your beautiful position with a lot of tons of space, etc. So instead of developing and aiming to securing the king, he moves twice the same piece. The bishop on f4, which has been moved already, it's been moved again. In principle, not a bad idea, but at the wrong moment, because there is a punishment for this move that Donald Byrne play on move number... Uh, 11 and now Bobby Bobby's genius now comes into full display okay so the beauty of the game starts now so if that was like uh, opening theory now we're gonna see the beauty of uh, Bobby's genius right now at play um, if you haven't seen this game before pause it and think about what you reckon black should be playing not a very 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 obvious move i gotta tell you that this is already a super grandmaster this is a genius move this is a very deep tactical attitude now performed by bobby fisher with huge style elegance and strength he plays knight a4 and just briefly of course, you may wonder, the heck is it doing? Is he giving the black knight now? Has he, he lost his mind? Okay, well, he didn't. Not at this moment now. So knight a4, uh, you would say, like, uh, this must be a blunder, mouse slip or something. I mean, what is he doing? Well, just to put it briefly, if knight were to take the black knight here, we're looking at knight e4, which would hit the queen and the bishop with tempo at the same time. So let me just so let me just play now just to have a knight just to give you a better a, a, a better image. So knight a4 uh, knight e4 after they captured now hits the queen and hits the bishop uh, uh, simultaneously. So now the queen's got to go. The queen has to go somewhere. Okay? And if you tell me, yeah, well, I don't care. I'm going to go to c1. I'm going to defend my bishop. I I have no problem. Well, there is a couple of problems here. It's bishop takes on f1, and now hits your rook. Oh, boy. And now if you're taking the bishop, gets what happens? It's another uh, tacticality here, which is a slaughtering of white pieces with queen a5 disaster. Check. And double attack on f4. So actually, queen c1 was falsely defending the bishop on g5. So I hope now, guys, this is uh, offering a clear image of uh, what I am talking about here. So it's just simply not working. It's just simply not working. So he retreated. The, we're not going to go in there because we're not going to finish not even one half an, uh, 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 half an hour here. So he retreated queen to a3. <clears throat> now, he took on c3, removing the knight and the defender of the e4. So that's important. Donald Byrne played bishop g5, and uh, he simply sanctions. He punishes his opponent for that mistake. That's what's happening. In order for Bobby Fischer to exert his genius, the other guy has to kind of help him. Okay? He needs to be helped, so to speak, quotation mark, 
in order for him to display how strong a player he is. And now knight to e4, attacking the bishop. Again, black king has no problem, but a white king is incredibly badly positioned. He didn't play bishop e2, Donald Byrne, and now he pays the price. Another an idea, don't forget to castle your king. Very important. Okay, now bishop takes on e7, attacking the queen here. Queen to b6, uh, moving away from the bishop threat. And now he develops his really concern about the king's safety. Really, really concerned. And you may say, wait a second, but that rook is hanging, right? I mean, I could take the rook, right? I mean, that's what I would say. Wait a second, I could take this guy straight away. Well, you kind of can. You can take it. But you're not going to end up uh, any good here because bishop's going to take back with tempo hitting your queen. I don't know. Let's say you want to keep trading your stuff here. Okay, but then we're looking at another issue. We've got this rookie eight, and we've got a devastating discovered check coming up. I mean, this is really, 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 really problematic here. Okay, so we're going to do this. What? Queen is going to take here. Okay, they might take here, but then remember, guys, we've got a discovered check. So we're taking here. Uh, let's say it's this, but then we've got knight to c3. Uh, disaster. This guy is already pinned. This is already, already, already a problem here, and the position is way better for black we're not going to deepening because we're going to get in the uh, branch over branch over semi branch and we're not going to finish so <clears throat> uh let's say that donald Byrne understood that aspect so he developed bishop c4 he's really concerned about king's position which by the way is awful but it's too late for that king because now bobby fisher plays another brilliancy knight c3 and you say, okay, what does that do? Well, we're looking again at the old idea, devastating stuff here happening. So knight took on c3, the pawn, and now hits the rook uh, on d1. So now he thought, you know something, let me attack your queen. So he thought at this point, Donald Bernard thought that he is going to, he is going to create a bigger threat by playing bishop to c5. And you would say it's a bigger threat. But if you guys remember, we discussed here, White King's position is incredibly bad. They should have castled the White King. They should have castled. Now the King is right in the middle. And before you're reacting to the threat from the Bishop, why don't you attack the White King first? Boom. Rook F to E8 here. Uh, disaster. The Rook goes away from the threat, so to speak. And with tempo, we call it in chess, with tempo attacking the King. The King had to move. And now, now the super crazy, the most probably the most brilliant move in the whole game. If you want to pause it, pause it. Uh, you really have to be a genius of chess to come up with this kind of move, envisioning the continuation that actually leads you to victory. There is one correct move in this position, one correct brilliant move black should play. Nothing else works for black in terms of winning, but this particular move right now. So when I told you, uh, the uh, uh, nickname game of the century it's, it's, it's rightfully given to this particular game and the move is <coughs> guys is bishop e6 here is bishop e6 um, it eyes this bishop here tempo checking the king and now if you think like any average mortal uh, okay what what I'm going to take the guy's uh, queen right that's exactly what Donald Burns said I mean yeah well, we're running into bishop c4, checking the white king. And uh, mind you, when you will be collecting this little guy here, you'll also be taking more material, and your rook will also be targeting the queen. But let's just not venture uh, that far off now, because this is a check. There is only one move here. Well, I don't think you're just crazy enough to play this one, because it's going to be just a disaster. Uh, so king had to move. But now we're getting into a windmill check with knight e2. Where do you go? There is only one square here. And king f1 and now windmill again. Bang. This is a disaster. It's check from the bishop again. Discovered check. You grabbed another pawn, uh, revealing the bishop's diagonal, which would play a massive role in winning. And king goes back and boom, knight e2. King had to move again. And now another check again from the bishop this this little guy here it's it's a monster knight c3 bishop checking again okay it's 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 devastating here and not mentioning that actually the bishop hits the rook oh boy king had to go and now remember 
the a took on b6 rook now hitting the queen the queen unfortunately if you touch the knight the bishop will be taking you immediately i mean this is just this is just devastating here this is absolutely devastating what a tactical genius what brilliant ideas one after another three brilliances in this game no mistake no error no inaccuracies just the beautiful game uh, uh blended to perfection in all its uh, mixing ideas so queen has to move queen to b4 it's devastating it's absolutely and look at the how the rook in the corner does not exist what matters absolutely in chess guys it's the pieces activity okay so the rook on h1 does not exist in practical terms it's on the paper but in all its practicality it doesn't exist it doesn't do nothing you can throw it out the window so queen to b4 another attack on the queen rook to a4 taking bunch of space bunch of squares and desperately queen goes on b6 hoping for something uh, but when they do so actually the rook is falling now and everything everything crumbles now h3 rook takes hitting on f2 twice knight and rook <clears throat> knight takes on f2 attacking the rook now and now they thought they're going to be generating some tradings and maybe some perpetual check or they probably they were hoping for this uh black takes queen takes uh sorry queen checks on the background but not a problem you've got a bishop there that blocks okay knight now takes and bishop to uh d5 uh, actually announcing a potential a potential concentrating of attacking forces onto uh, g2 of course as soon as the white knight moves they play now on a3 to sort of like blocking that bishop's diagonal knight now plays on e4 and you may wonder why why well uh, there is one major major idea here actually there are two or three or maybe even more uh, in principle that wants to say i might be able after i move the king out of the pin to just provide more checks and attacking the white king so that's another idea and also always good to having the rook on the second rank so now queen moves on to b8 and you may wonder why it's simply because they wanted to grab something from them you know and as we said they he does want to give nothing and actually he pushed the pawn forward he doesn't give him nothing h4 everything is painful for white i simply do not have good moves to suggest for white h5 blocking everything it's 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 a complete domination it's so painful to play with the white pieces at this stage really this this is just a massacre here so knight plays on uh e5 trying to generate something here trying to maybe taking some pieces of the board something he hoped to generate here king now goes on g7 you may say it's an innocuous move that doesn't mean nothing actually it means absolutely because you are freeing the bishop now and actually that's uh, just simply game over this is this is just too painful to continue playing okay so now king goes on g1 uh bishop now checks look at how black pieces are completely completely attacking dominating pushing the king uh which is a hopeless hopeless uh white king now which will be checkmated in only four moves my chess friends bishop to b4 king goes d1 bishop to b3 here it's just it's 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 crazy and check again had to go and knight c3 and checkmate in just one move after king to c1 you're probably seeing now the checkmate guys which is rook to c2 fabulous game game of the century this is the full genius of bobby fisher that's why i wanted to make a video dedicated to this one and i think i'm planning more games to do my chess friends uh dedicated to bobby fisher i hope you enjoyed this donald Byrne bobby fisher 1956 game in the grunfeld defense russian variation guys and um <clears throat> i'll see you i'll see you with more more fabulous fabulous games and analysis uh, subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on twitch guys and we'll do more stuff together more friendly and hopefully we get to play better chess every single day